And that's one of the things I didn't know also. When I first started doing tshuva, I, uh, you know, I kept kosher. I thought I kept kosher my whole life with a couple of breaks from time to time. And my exceptions was, I'm never going to eat meat. I'm never going to eat pig. I'm never going to eat milk and meat. Only thing I'm going to do, I'm going to eat, you know, non-meat outside. I'll eat pizza. I'll eat salad. I'll eat pasta. No problem. But then once you actually start learning about kosher, you start learning about food, you start realizing that, wait a minute, there's three pizzerias. They all use the same ingredients, but all taste different. How's it possible? Johnny's pizza is cheese, tomatoes, and bread. Steve's pizza is cheese, tomato, and bread. And Luigi's pizza is uh, cheese, tomato, and bread. How is it three different tastes? Because the sauce both used for the cheese and for the actual tomato sauce itself is made with different types of meat. So it depends what type of meat you're making it with in order to make the flavor. So now when you eat pizza at Domino's, at Pizza Hut, at Luigi's, or any place that's not kosher, not only are you, not, uh, are you violating the dairy and meat, but you're actually eating them together. And without learning about this, you'd never know. You know, so if something doesn't have a kosher, I have a whole uh, list. My uh, my wife I, uh, made a list of different ingredients they uh, use in food uh, that even if you don't care for kosher, you still wouldn't want to eat them. And they're only found in food that's not kosher. Meaning that it's so easy to make food kosher today because the system is big, the kosher industry is huge, that if something doesn't have a kosher sign, there's a real reason for it. Like for example, there's a uh, there was an orange juice named Sunny Delight that uh, for many many years was not kosher, and only in the last five or six years became kosher. Now people thought that this is a scam of the rabbis. Why would orange juice not be kosher? What's wrong with orange juice? It comes from orange juice. Rabbis are just trying to milk the orange company, right? Greedy. No, you'd find out that if you investigated that. Sunny Delight wanted a special ingredient to make their orange juice extra yellow because it's more marketable when it's extra yellow. So that extra ingredient wasn't kosher. The reason why is because it was crushed beetles. Now, whether you like kosher or you don't like kosher, I still wouldn't want to eat beetles. And if you see this ingredient list that we have, it's all real. You could, it's also publicly available. You can see this stuff. You see some of these ingredients they use in food it's so much disgusting that even if you're not Jewish, you wouldn't want to eat non-kosher. And they don't write crushed beetles. Yeah, they don't write crushed beetles. They give you like formulas like oh. E320 or you know <laughs> Red 14 or some you know different types of uh, code names that you know you have to be in the industry to know. So if it's not kosher, there's a reason for it. Um, you now, in regards to uh, food, it's very very easy because. Um, you know what's kosher and what's not. But the Torah also says something very, very special about kosher. Where Hashem says, when you eat non-kosher food, you become, your soul becomes impurified. Now, the sages say that the word nitmetem, which is the one that's used in this, uh, in this verse, is spelled differently than it's spelled usually. It's missing a vowel which could be read in a different way, which means netamtem. Netamtem means stupefied. Meaning that when someone, when a Jew is eating non-kosher food, his soul becomes spiritually stupid. Now, not stupid like they can't build a building or a rocket ship, but it becomes very difficult and virtually impossible for them to learn Torah. Because their neshama has so many uh, peels, if you will, getting in the way that it's hard for them to accept it at face value. And you have to get rid of those peels and it becomes very, very difficult. And that's why you see sometimes people go to seminars, you know, uh, and completely secular. And in many cases, they don't even go. Some of the people don't even go to the actual lectures. And this is proven method many, many times. Rabbi Mizrahi has told me about it several times. Uh, Rabbi Zamir Cohen has said it several times. Many people that have experience with seminars have, have said this several times. It's proof that usually they have these three or four day seminars. You know, where they have lecture after lecture after lecture of different Torah proofs and so on. And obviously it's in a hotel, it's in a nice hotel, there's kosher food. 
And the people that come to these lectures, sometimes some of them don't even go to the lectures, but yet at the end of the seminar, at the end of four days, they do tshuva anyway. They're excited about Torah, they want to learn, they want to go to the next seminar, they start doing tefillin, they start doing stuff. So they ask the rabbis, how do you explain this? It's like because for the first time in their life, they actually ate kosher food for four days in a row. And the food had enough time to turn into blood, because all the food that you eat turns into blood. It becomes your soul. The food that you ate on the first day finally had enough time to turn into the blood that you're using. Finally, your, your neshama started becoming purified. So just the food that you're eating is going to affect your learning. And your mitzvahs are going to mitzvah are going to be a little easier to do. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.